Good morning guys from day two of the Kruger National Park. It's pretty early, I don't know what the time is, but it's just after sunrise. The temperature is already pretty toasty outside. We're about to go for a morning game drive and do some other fun excursions and activities that may or may not involve darting a rhino or elephant. And then later Cameron is joining me, he's flying in from a place called Port Elizabeth and he's gonna help me shoot and take photos and whatnot. So yeah, should be an exciting day. But let's go for that game drive. I'll be able to do like a nice reflection shot. How do you guys feel? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So let me just briefly explain what we have to do today. Uh, there's a, a rhino that has got uh, collars on it and one of the, the collars has uh, stopped working. So it's supposed to be out there somewhere. So we're going to see if we can find it. We dart these animals with the drug called M99 and we combine it with a tranquilizer. Now M99 is an extremely potent opioid. One drop of that is sufficient to, to terminate your life. And we have a shortage of antidotes, so. <laughs> so it's just an acute stressor. They go to sleep. They're not aware of what's going on. We wake up. What is it, John? A rhino or Ellie? It's a, a black rhino, hopefully. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So his little ears back. Okay, so they've darted the rhino. And um, the chopper herded it towards the road so that the team can do all the necessary procedures. So we're gonna go investigate. Well, now we're going to Twitter instead of Alright, guys. John. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> Alright, guys, when the runner's gone, I need the first four people for the flip. Six, four, mate.
probably, as Richard said, one of the most phenomenal mornings ever. I mean, you can't top that. Literally, we got to see the Rangers dart a rhino. Um, and that also wasn't just for our entertainment. That was them putting a new track on, which helps them monitor the whole rhino poaching crisis. Incredible. Now I think we're going to have some brunch, chill. And I think later the sniffer dogs are coming, which will obviously be the update of when Ben, SP, Adrian and myself did the project here last year. So we're going to see where the money went and why so much money is needed for the dogs. Oh my word, beds are made. What the hell? As though it can get more exciting. Berki has arrived, who has in his possession the dog that we raised money for, Ben did the film for CNN Great Big Story last year. I'll put a link up one of these sides, cards, whatever. You guys can give it a watch. Um, and basically we asked uh, people to help us donate money and we raised over 5,000 US dollars. I'm sure some of you guys helped donate. And yeah, this is the, the little puppy that the money went towards. And he's only, I think he's one years old and he's still in training. So we're gonna go meet him now. Everyone meet Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Say what's up to the YouTubes. <laughs> YouTubes. So this is All the lady right. who Ben, ben uh, raised the money for. Mr. Charles. It's a double blood and cross. Beyond the beer is our canine manager. Berkey as we call him. And then we've got Gavin Holden Smith who is the man who breeds these dogs. We, <coughs> can we ask Nicole just to give us a two minute... When they finish with training, they do up to 18, 20 hour old score. And they take it for, for 20, 28 Ks. They had very good success in the past, but I think they're going to have better success now mm -hmm. with this one. Obviously Charlie is still in training. He will be finished with his training end of May. The money goes for the dog, which is about 48,000. And then, go, that goes with every dog we have these days. Is it a tracking collar or a tracking harness? But this harness is unique. Because it's got its telemetry tracking. It tells me on my cell phone where the dog is, where did it go. What does the training entail? Normally they, they start with breeding the dogs. Uh, um, scientific stuff into the breeding of the dogs. You have to have the right male, the right female. At six months, I start training the dogs on spoor. Hmm. Put it out spoor, let them follow little spoor, small sometimes, tracks. Sometimes Your socialization period before that is very important. You have to socialize with everything in the bush. Hmm. From big five is the most important wildlife. So your socializing is the, it's the most important. But the dog must learn how to focus and concentrate for long periods of time by using only his nose. Um, a lot of dogs, but uh, you and yourself. Look who I found. Hey how are you doing? Good. How, are you? Good. how was your long trip over? Yeah, it was long, but I think it was worth it. Eh? Dude, you missed the best morning ever. Yeah. Hopefully you'll see some stuff in the game drive. All day. Hashtag missed out. Okay, we're about to do a sunset game walk, which should be interesting. How many are we? Eight. Ah. You missed out on so much, right? Yeah, I did. I know. I'll catch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with the walking, it's a tiny bit different to the vehicle. Um, I'll be walking in front and running behind me and then everyone following in a single file. It is quite thick, you can see the grass is long, so we're going to have to be on our toes a tiny bit. Uh, when we walk, no talking at all, and just yourself and your own mind and thoughts. Very important, if anything happens, don't run unless we tell you to run. And yeah, for the rest, have fun, enjoy. <coughs> Was it? Buffalo bull, sorry. Everyone alright? <coughs> Got the adrenaline pumping? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If he came here, he could have come <laughs> straight towards us. That's actually. why I loaded. Yeah. When he stood up, that's why I loaded. Yeah. Because if he comes, he's going to come for prison. 